I am live. What's up, y'all? Captain Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. Okay. Let us say a word of prayer, and then we will jump right on in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you just thanking you for today. Thank you for your kindness, oh God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Oh God, I just surrender myself to you right now, oh God. Uh, speak through my mouth, my hand gestures, my eyes, everything, oh God. I surrender it all to you that you might speak to me and breathe through me and allow your word to come forth and bless your people. And I thank you for it. We're expecting great things. And we declare and decree that signs and wonders and miracles shall follow the release prophetic word. For it's your word. Oh God, and your word will come to pass. And no word that you release doesn't have power. And we thank you for it. We believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. So here's my sister. Let me say hi to my sister. All right. <clears throat> Today's prophetic word is all things new. Today's prophetic word is all things new. Okay, now I'll give you the scripture reference for that as well. <clears throat> and then we'll dive into it. Because there's some things that the Holy Ghost wants to bring out, some things that the Spirit of God wants to show us that you haven't seen before. That's the benefit of a prophetic word. That's the benefit of watching it live as it's being breathed out. That's the benefit of asking the Spirit of God to open up what he's saying to you. Okay. Because the Spirit of God is the one that wrote the Bible. He wrote it through people, yes. But the Spirit of God is the one that moved on people to inspire them to write the scriptures. That means that no one understands or knows the Bible like the Holy Ghost. That's why you need to ask him and you need to invoke the presence of God so you can get revelation that you can only get from the writer. Okay? All right. <clears throat> We're going to look at Revelation chapter 21, verse 5. The book of Revelation chapter 21, verse 5. Now, the book of Revelation is the last book in the New Testament and therefore the last book in the Bible. The book of Revelation was written by the Apostle John, not John the Baptist. John the Baptist had baptized Jesus, was the Lord's first cousin. He is not the writer of the book of Revelation. He was actually killed and beheaded during Jesus's lifetime. The John that wrote the book of Revelation was the Apostle John, one of the 12 disciples, and also the one that was in uh, Jesus' inner circle, Peter, James, and John, that John. John also was the one who went to the tomb when the Lord was resurrected and outran Peter because he was younger to see if what the women said was true, that the Lord was actually gone. John was also the one that laid his head on Jesus' breast during the Last Supper because they were tight like that. John is also the one that was there at the foot of the cross so that when Jesus was dying, he wanted to make sure his mother Mary was taken care of because he was going to only stay on earth for 40 days after his resurrection and then he was leaving. So Jesus gave Mary to John and Jesus gave John to Mary as an older son since Jesus was going to be leaving that role. And on the cross, the Lord said, woman, behold thy son and son, behold thy mother. Okay, that John, that guy, okay? So John and Jesus were like this, okay? So John actually got the revelation when he was in exile, and some say he was in jail, but one way or the other, he was away from society, whether he was imprisoned or exiled or whatever on the Isle of Patmos. And John was, scholars say, 90 years of age or older when he got the book of Revelation. So, I mean, everything about this book is fascinating. Everything about Apostle John's life is fascinating. He's the only disciple of the 12 that didn't die a martyr. Of course, we know Judas killed himself or hung himself. Or, but all of the others that followed Jesus, the 12, they all died martyrs. They were all martyred for their faith. Uh, Peter, for example, was crucified upside down because Peter said he wasn't worthy to be crucified like the Lord was. So this John, Apostle John, is the only one that lived to see old age, okay? So again, it's fascinating, fascinating who's writing this book, the Holy Spirit through them and the background behind it. And I'm just scratching the surface. I'm just trying to give you a little background, okay? 
So the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 5. I'm going to read from several translations as always. <clears throat> New International Version. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. New Living Translation. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. Trust, trustworthy and true. Very important. Pay attention to those words. English Standard Version. And he who was seated on the throne said, behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Berean Study Bible, and the one seated on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are faithful and true. How does that apply to us today? This is the problem a lot of people have with Bible study. They read the words, but they say, but how does that relate to me? I don't live in the first century. Okay, I don't live in the third century. I don't live in the fourth or the fifth century. I live in the 21st century. How does that apply to me? That's why you need the Holy Ghost. That's why you need the prophetic. Okay, so that's why I don't just exegete the scripture according to what the text says. It's also prophetic exegesis, it's a prophetic teaching where the Spirit of God can breathe the life into us that he wants us to have now the understanding and the life he wants us to have now from those words written in the scripture. Because God is a person, not a set of rules. This is a relationship, not a religion. Okay. All right. So what has that got to do with us now? I will tell you what the Holy Ghost told me. And the one seated on the throne and the one seated on the throne, that's talking about uh, Father or Jesus, both of them have thrones in heaven. He said, behold, I make all things new. <clears throat> and what the Spirit of God revealed to me is that that is what the Lord is saying to some of his people right now. That he is literally going to make your life new. Now, I need to take a little, a little side trip to give you some more information. And then we'll continue that and come back to our main scripture. Okay, we're going to look at Genesis uh, 6 and 8. We're going to look at Genesis 6 and 8. Genesis 6 and 8 is talking about the flood and Noah and the time of the flood. Okay, Genesis 6 and 8 says, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. New King James and King James both say, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, Berean Study Bible, Noah, however, found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Okay, and that word there, favor, coming out of the Hebrew, Strong's 2580, says graciousness, subjective, objective, graciousness. It was grace. So what that means is that the reason that Noah was able to save humanity is because Noah was able to reach up into the heavenlies and discover grace before grace was given. And what that means is that Noah knew how not to trust in his own righteousness. Noah knew how to trust in God's favor. Noah knew how to talk to God and basically say, I'm not coming with you, coming before you with my own righteousness in my own efforts and my own strength. I'm coming before you based on your righteousness and your grace and your favor toward me. Because in the New Testament, we understand that the grace of God means unmerited favor. The grace of God is found in Jesus Christ. Father put his unmerited favor in Jesus Christ. And now all who believe and accept and step into Jesus Christ, you get the same benefits just like Jesus got. You get covered with his name. You get covered with his blood. His righteous life that he lived now comes on your account and God justifies you and counts you as righteous just as if you'd never sinned. So in other words, Jesus actually did the righteousness, but if you believe you get the benefit, that ain't nothing but grace. <laughs> that's unmerited favor. And that's why a lot of people have a problem with God because that is not the way a man would do it. 
But just because you don't see that kind of goodness down here doesn't mean it's not up there. And so God covers every believer with the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the righteousness of Jesus, and then you get sealed with the Holy Ghost. What did you do to deserve all that? Zero. That is not what we deserve. What we deserve is an eternity in hell and the lake of fire away from God because of our sins. That's what we deserve. But instead, if you believe in Jesus, God will confer the righteousness that's in Christ on your account. And Father God will treat you just as if you never sinned. He will graft you back in. Adam separated from God through Jesus. Father God grafts us back into him because Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. So Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father but by me. So Jesus says, I'm the way you get reconnected to God, Father God. And so Father God, through his grace and his grace alone, says, I'm not going to give you what you deserve. I'm going to give you the benefit of, of what Jesus has. I'm going to confer that to you if you believe. That, that's, that's just grace. Ain't none by grace. Ain't none by grace. Okay? Noah understood that before Jesus Christ manifested on earth. That's what that means. That Noah found favor. He found grace. He found graciousness in the eyes of God. The Bible goes on to say in verse 9, Genesis 6, 9, that Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. You know what that means? Noah walked with God. I mean, he believed God because, and he tapped into grace. He got covered with righteousness because of God's goodness, not his own. You understand? So why did I say all that? I said all that to show you that since God is eternal and since God and his word and his kingdom exist outside of time, the heavenly realm, the glory realm, is outside of time, okay? Time is something that God invented. Time is something that God created, but he's not in it, it's, it's a tool. And so where God lives, the heavenly realm and the glory realm exists outside of time. What that means for us as believers is that if you have enough faith or enough knowledge of scripture, you can go up into the heavenly realm and pull something into the now before it's even happened on earth yet. Did you know that? That's how all those Old Testament prophets saw Jesus before he came through Mary's womb. To quote the Lord himself, he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Abraham saw Jesus before thousands of years before the Lord was even born, okay? Moses saw Jesus, okay? Enoch saw the Lord, a whole lot of people saw the Lord before he actually came through Mary's womb, okay? Because, because God is eternal and God's outside of time. Then as a believer, you can reach up into the heavenlies before the throne of God and get blessings, grace, knowledge, revelation, things that actually haven't happened yet and pull them into your life in the now. Did you know that? Did you know that? You can do that pre-time. And you can do that post time. What do I mean by that? Abraham and Sarah, remember how this whole thing started? This whole thing started by an older couple having a baby. And they had a baby when? When it was past due, when it was past their season, when it was past time, okay? They were old and the Bible says that their bodies were now dead. Can you guys still see me okay? My screen's looking blurry. If you guys can see me okay, let me know, because my screen is looking blurry for some reason. I don't know why it's looking blurry. But um, anyway, so we can pull stuff uh, from the invisible to the visible. We can pull it out of time. So you can pull it past time. So if you were past the age of childbearing, as both Abraham and Sarah were, both Abraham and Sarah were past the age that they should have been having kids. And what happened? God gave them Isaac anyway. See that? There's another woman in Elisha's day who said she wanted a baby and the man of God had blessed her and she'd been faithful and blessed the man of God and she wanted a child. But she said, my husband's old. Elisha said, this time during the season of life next year, you're going to have a baby. You can pull blessings from God into your life pre-time. It is blurred. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, wait, should be straight now. Devil's always messing with my tech. Always trying to stop me from getting the word out. Okay, it should be straight now. So let me know. 
Should have been straight now. I was always messing with my tech. Anyway, so, so uh, you can have a baby, like they had a baby, past the age of baby having. You can pull it post time. You can also pull it pre time. Okay, like Noah understood grace before great because grace and truth came to Jesus Christ, but Noah got it before it actually happened on earth. Very important. Why is that so important? Is my screen still blurred? Can y'all see me clear now? Does it look clear to me now? Okay. Enemies always trying to stop the prophetic, prophetic word from going out. I tell you the truth, but that's all right. The gates of hell. That's right, sis. Don't let Satan get in. The gates of hell shall not prevail. That's right. So why is that important to what we're studying today? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why it's important. It's important because God wants to take the prophetic word in Revelation 21.5 of, behold, I make all things new. Then he said, write this down for these words are faithful and true and pull it into your life now, right now. What does that mean practically, Prophet Taylor? Good, I'll tell you what that means practically. What we are in in America, or globally, not just America, in the world, what we're in right now, we are in as the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. We are in as the days of Noah. The end of much flesh has come up before God. The end of much flesh has come up before God. That is what God said during the flood. Right before God wiped out humanity from the face of the earth in, in the, with the flood waters of Noah, right before God said that, he said, behold, the end of all flesh has come up before me. And then the Bible goes on to say that Noah found grace. Okay, well, the end of much flesh has come up before God. So many of the things we were doing, so much of the clowning, so many of the things that we as humans have been doing that haven't been pleasing in the eyes of the Lord. And that's why so many people are dying just all over. Small and great from all walks of life. Have you noticed that? Because the end of much flesh has come up from before the Lord. But just like the Lord told us at the beginning of this year through the prophetic locator word that if we listen to him, we can navigate and make it through this time. Only the people that are listening to Christ are gonna be able to make it navigate through this time because we're in the time as of Sodom and Gomorrah. We're in the time as of the days of Noah where judgment is here and it's wiping people out left and right. But the Lord said at the beginning of this year, if we listen to him, we can make it. We can make it through, okay? So for those that have been listening, those that have been faithful, those that have been obedient, those that have been doing what the Lord said do, God is saying he's trying to pull the blessing of making all things new into your life right now. In the Greek, behold, it means to look, okay? And it means look with an exclamation point. See, or lo and behold, look with an exclamation point. I make... That's God making, I make, I manufacture, I construct, I make or I do all things, all the whole, every kind of, including all the forms uh, of dissentientian. Uh, it means the totality, the whole. I make all things new, fresh, new, unused, novel. What does that mean? That means that God wants to make your life completely new, new frame of mind, new teeth, new skin, new fertility if you didn't have kids and you want them and you never had them, new relationships, new health for your internal organs, your kidneys, your liver, your spleen, your appendix, your stomach, your intestines, your lungs, okay? New career path new education, going back to school, new everything, new everything. God wants to make everything in your life new right now. You see how God wiped out all the religious structures that we had, don't you? You see how God just completely wiped out all of the, the, all the religious stuff that we had going on. It's all gone now. We can't even gather and congregate in church. Everybody's online now, just like I am now. 
Everybody's doing their stuff online. We have online ga gatherings now. And some churches are trying to gather in person and people are still struggling with that and people are still contracting COVID. But everything that was about our, our structured religious life that we knew is gone. And it might not ever come back. It ain't gonna never come back like it was. See, so God, for those that are listening, God is trying to bring that blessing of Revelation 21 and five in your life right now. So what I always say you have to do you have to believe it, you have to receive it, you have to say it, and you have to obey it. What does that mean? To believe it means that what God is saying is true, okay? So the first step is it's got to be preached or prophesied to you, which is what I'm doing now, okay? Because you have to hear it, okay? Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God, but how can they hear without a preacher, and how can he preach unless he be sent? So that's what I'm doing now is releasing the word, but you have to believe it. You got to believe that what God says is true. That requires faith that you take off the limits of your mind and stop trying to limit God based on what you can do. Stop trying to limit God based on what man can do. Stop trying to limit God based on what your senses are telling you and believe that God is equal to his word. If the Lord says it, he can do it. That's believing. But then you got to receive it. What does that mean? That means you got to believe it's true for me. That means that you got to receive it in your life, in your heart. That is why people go to hell that say they believe in Jesus and all the different kind of stuff and they still don't have a relationship with God because they never received it. Believing it is one thing, but you have to receive it. Believing that such a thing is possible is level one, but level two is such a thing is possible for me. That's receiving, that's step two. Step three, you have to say it. You got to confess it. You got to say the same thing God says. Now, I don't have time to do the whole teaching on confession because, but there's plenty of stuff you can look up on the power of the tongue and the power of confession is teaching after teaching after teaching by many apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers, book after book, video after video, sermon after sermon about how you got to watch what you say because you have what you say. Long story short is because we're made in God's image and God is a speaking spirit. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are speaking. They are speaking God. They are speaking spirit. So when he made us in his image, we became speaking spirits like he is. And then he gave us dominion over the earth. So that means when we establish and declare and decree a thing, it comes to pass. That's why you have to say it. You can't say you believe something, you receive something, then confess something that's the total opposite in the total other direction of what you've been saying, because what you say is going to come to pass. That's why you got to believe it and receive it. You got to actually believe what God says. Then you got to say, this is going to happen for me. Then you got to say it. And then finally, step four, you have to obey it. And what that means is that you have to put some works behind your faith. If God tells you you're going to have a baby, then get the baby's room ready and go buy a baby carriage. Okay, if God tells you to start a business, then start a business. If God tells you you'd go back to school, then start doing the research and figure out which schools you want to go to and figure out what degree you want. You have to put some works behind your faith. You have to obey it. You have to act like the word that you have believed, received, and confessed is going to come to pass. Because if you don't do that, it's what James says, that faith without works is dead. If you don't put any works behind your faith, you don't actually believe it. If I told you there was a suitcase full of a million dollars outside of your house right now, if you believed it, you'd stop listening to me and run out the house. And we're not talking about where that suitcase at. You do something. If you believed it, that's what that means. So you got to believe it, you got to receive it, you got to say it, and you got to obey it. So that's what God wants us to do with this prophetic word. Behold, I make all things new. Say that with me now. Behold, I make all things new. Let's say it again. Behold, I make all things new. And I declare and decree unto you that signs and wonders and miracles will follow that word. And they will manifest today in your life right now today. I'm talking about in your life right now today, before this day is over, before the sun sets. Today, Sunday, August 23rd, 2020, you will see the movement of God to give you an entirely brand new life in your thoughts, in your emotions, in your body, in your fertility, in your finances, in your career, in your family in your friendship relationships, platonic love, in your romantic relationships, if you want to get married, 
or if you want to revive your marriage or save your marriage, right now, today, not two days from now, not Wednesday, not five months from now, right now, today, this word will begin to break forth in your life to give you a sign that God is telling the truth, to give you a wonder, something that you can't explain, to give you a miracle, something that's either a speeding up of a natural process or a circumvention of a natural process today. Believe it, receive it, say it, and obey it. Let's look at this last part and I'll be through. Then he said, and again, the he is talking about father and son. Then he said, I say, I speak, I mean, I mention, I tell, I call, I command. Write this down. Okay. That word coming out of the Greek, grapson, means to engrave, to write, to describe. Write this down for these words, okay, are faithful, trustworthy, and true. Okay. Uh, it, it, it coming out of the Greek, uh, alithinoi, alithinoi, I believe that Greek word is, it says made of truth. These words are real and genuine and made of truth. That's very significant. That's why I say you have to go back to the original language and read what it says in the Hebrew and the Greek and the Aramaic. That word faithful, faithful, believing, it means trustworthy and trustful, but that word true does not just mean a, a true statement. It means that the Lord's words are literally made of truth. God is saying, this is real, this is genuine, okay? What, how is that significant? How does that apply to us now? What that means is that when God gives you the new vision, you have to write it down, okay? Don't just let God give you some revelation on your life and you don't write it down. That doesn't even make any sense. You've got to write it down. You've got to write down what the Lord says. Do you know why you have to write down what the Lord says? So you can have a record, so you can watch it come to pass, but also so that you know what to keep confessing every day as it goes on. And also, so when you need to encourage yourself, the devil's going to come at you, but the devil's a defeated foe. The devil cannot defeat you, but he's sure going to fight you. He can't beat you because he's already beaten in Christ, but he's going to fight you. That's why the Bible says we have to fight the good fight of faith. What that means is that we have to believe God with all that we have. We have to put on all our armor. We have to stand on the word of God until it comes to pass. Okay? So there are going to be days where the enemy is going to be coming at you hard or might be trying to bring up some stuff from the past or it might be some scars inside of you that need to be healed or it might be some circumstances. Ain't no telling. You're going to have to stand on God's word. And if you wrote down what the Lord said, that's what's going to help you and give you encouragement and faith as you are dealing with your faith fight. That's what's going to help you stay the course because you got to believe it, receive it, say and obey it every day. When God releases something to you, you got to say it every day. You got to confess it every day. You got to wake up saying it. You got to say it in the middle of the day. You got to say it before you go to bed. Okay. You have to stay with what the Lord says and the way to keep our minds and our confession and everything on track is write the vision down. Also, it, it keeps the vision in front of you when you can see the words on the page. It helps you because what happens is when God bursts in something inside of you, it's wonderful. It's, it's a dream. It's an imagination. It's, it's full of hope. Okay. But you don't want it to just live and die inside of you because then all it was was a dream. When you get a prophetic word, that's supposed to come to pass. Remember that God told Abraham and Sarah they're going to have a baby. Isaac showed up. <laughs> the Old Testament is full of prophecies about how the Lord was going to come and be born on earth and be Emmanuel, God with us. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And he was a savior. Well, the Lord eventually showed up from Mary's womb. That, see, that's the difference between just a dream and a prophetic word. If you get a prophetic word from the Lord, if the spirit of God says something, it's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. And you have got to stay the course because one of the favorite tricks of the devil is to try to get you out of the path of the blessing. Because remember, always remember that the devil has known God longer than we have. Never forget that. I'm going to say it one more time. The devil has known God longer than we have. The reason that Lucifer became Satan is because he rebelled against God in heaven. 
And he convinced a third of the angels to join that, that coup, that rebellion with him, and they got kicked out. That's how the, those angels, those unclean spirits became demons. That's how Lucifer became Satan. So they know that they can't win against God and they know that if God says something is gonna come to pass, they know that. They used to be angels, now they're demons. They know that God's word is true, they know that. So his goal is to take as many humans down to hell and death and destruction with him as he can. The devil and the demons and the kingdom of darkness want to destroy as many human lives as they can because they already know that they go into the lake of fire. They already know that eventually the eternal judgment of God is going to catch up with them and they're not going to be able to run around doing what they're doing forever. They know that. They said that when they saw Jesus in the flesh. They said, have you come to torment us before the time? We know you. We know who you are, the Holy One of God. They know that. But what they're trying to do is get you as a human to disbelieve God. And, and here's, let me, let me show you. If this is a street and, and there is a truck full of blessings or gold or money or however you imagine that truck is a blessing truck, okay? There's a truck full of blessing coming down the street and that truck of blessing is coming towards you and it's coming to drop off its blessings to you. What the devil wants to do is make you take your whole car and come all the way over here to another road to get on another street. That way you over here doing something that the Lord told you not to do. You over here being distracted. You over here involved in something that God don't even have for you and the blessing truck just, just goes right on by you. So it's not that God's word didn't come to pass. Yeah, you missed it. You missed it because you weren't where you were supposed to be when it was time for the blessing to manifest. That's one of the favorite tricks of the devil because he knows he can't stop the word. That's why the devil tries so hard to stop you from getting into faith. That's why he tries. So have you ever noticed that when you say, I'm gonna take some dedicated time to pray, how it looked like the phone ring or you got all these emails or your phone start blowing up with tweets or something happened to distract you, you ever noticed that? Or the kids start crying or somebody get an attitude or something happens. That's the devil trying to distract you because the devil knows once you learn how to die to yourself and come alive to the word of God, once you stop doing what you think and start doing what God says, what God says by definition has to work. God's word is unstoppable. And when you align your choices and your belief and your confession with what God has already said, then you become unstoppable. Or as God told Joshua in Joshua chapter one, thou shall make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. And the devil knows he can't stop that. So what he likes to do is to get some stuff going in your life, get some noise going, get some distraction going. Oh, look at me, look at me, look at me and pull you off of Blessing Street over here to Distraction Street. Now you over there on Distraction Boulevard doing a whole bunch, fooling with a bunch of folk, don't have nothing to do with your destiny. Fooling with a bunch of folks that have nothing to do with what God has called you to do over there on Distraction Boulevard. And you're supposed to be over here on Blessing Street where the truck is coming with the blessing. You understand? So that's why you got to write it down <laughs> so that when the devil comes trying to get you off of Blessing Street over there on Distraction Boulevard with a bunch of stuff that don't have nothing to do with nothing, you'd be like, nope, you'd be, what's that, that phrase we have? Not today, devil, not today, not any day. Okay, I'm gonna stay right here where the Lord told me to stay. I wish, oh, I wish I could tell you the times in my life, and I wish I could tell you the people that I know personally that missed their blessing or they missed the fullness of it because they let the devil distract them. Because the devil will wait until it's a crucial time in your life. I'll give you a practical example because this does not fail. What I'm about to say, this will never fail. The last semester, right before you graduate anything. The last semester, right before you graduate anything, junior high, high school, a two year, a technical school, uh, uh, four year university, graduate program, PhD program, doesn't matter, online, it doesn't matter. When you get down to that last semester, I want you to notice all kind of hell started breaking loose in, loose in your life. Sometimes you get lethargic. Sometimes you just get lazy. You're like, I wonder, you're right in the last leg of your journey. And then all of a sudden you get tired all the time. 
And here comes maybe a new relationship or maybe here come a whole relationship. Maybe here, here come one of your exes. Maybe here come a blast from the past. Maybe, you know, maybe somebody in the department, all of a sudden y'all have conflict. And all of a sudden you have a problem with a teacher or a professor or whatever. Or maybe one of your friends, friends, you know, the friend of a friend, all of a sudden they got something to say. All of a sudden they decide they don't like you. Y'all been hanging together fine all this time. And now all of a sudden, not your friend, but one of their friends decided they don't like you. Now here they come with some drama. Every time you get in your last semester of anything, I guarantee you something like that gonna happen. Watch, think back in your life. <clears throat> think back in your life before you got ready to graduate anything and think about that last semester. Just think about it. Think about two weeks before the wedding. Think about two weeks before the graduation ceremony. Just think about it. Think about right before something crucial finna go down, what happens? That's the devil. Because what is he doing? He's trying to get you off of Blessing Street where you can finish your course. That's what Apostle Paul said. I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I have finished my course. That means that I walked all the way on the path God wanted me on until I finished what God wanted me to do. And what Satan wants to do is, again, get you over there on Distraction Boulevard. I can't tell you the number of people that have missed their blessing because they got distracted. Do you want me to prove that to you by scripture? Yes, I can. Uh-huh. The book of Ruth. What did you say, Prophet Taylor? I said the book of Ruth. I don't have time to explain the whole thing, but if you read the book of Ruth, if you know anything about Ruth's story, you know that Ruth was not a Jew. She was not a Hebrew woman. Ruth was a Moabite that's married to a Jew. She met in a Jewish family. Her family left uh, where God told them to be. All of the men died. So Ruth stuck with her mother-in-law, Naomi. And when Naomi came back home, she said, don't call me Naomi anymore, call me Mara, which means bitter. I went out full, the Almighty has brought me back in, but it's what Naomi said. But the truth of the matter was they got in disobedience. That's why all the men died. Ruth came back and Naomi started working with Ruth to get her a husband. And Ruth ended up marrying the richest man in town named Boaz. And Ruth got in the bloodline of King David. She's King David's great grandmother. But that's also the bloodline of Christ. Well, when Boaz was checking out who Ruth was, they described Ruth to him and they said, she's not sleeping with the young men. In other words, she ain't trying to be a cougar. She ain't out there getting a swerve on with as many young boys as she can. Why was that a selling feature? Why was that a standout? Because that means that all the other women were. What that means in no uncertain terms is that God was looking for a woman to become King David's great grandmother. God was looking for a woman to put into the bloodline of Jesus Christ, to bless her, to be a part of the holy royal bloodline of Christ. And he couldn't find any women in the city that was living virtuous enough for him to trust them with that assignment because they was busy having sex with all them young boys, being fast, being, you know, slutty and whorish and doing, doing their thing. So God had to reach over and get someone that <laughs> wasn't even a Hebrew. She was a Moabitess and bring her in because Ruth was virtuous. She was not out there sleeping with everybody. She was working when Boaz noticed her. That means all them other women missed their chance at history because they could have had a chance to get with Boaz and become King David's great grandmama and get in the bloodline of Christ had they been doing what God told them to do, which is be women of faith and women of virtue. But that ain't what they wanted to do. So they missed that blessing and God gave it to Ruth. He gave it to someone that wasn't even a Hebrew, once she wasn't even of Israel. He grafted a Gentile in. That doesn't tell you anything. That means that there have been blessings on Blessing Street <laughs> that God prophesied and told you they was coming. And here come the devil, pulled you out of Blessing Street, that blessing went right on by you and stopped at somebody else's house because you was over there doing something you ain't had no business doing. I want you to think about how many times in your life you got in disobedience. That means the blessing truck just rolled right on past you because you was over somewhere you had no business being. 
So that's why you have to write down when the Lord tells you something and you got to say it every day and you got to meditate on it every day, which is exactly what God said in Joshua chapter one. That's exactly what the Lord said. You got to keep my words in your mouth. You got to keep my word in front of you. You got to confess it. God said, you got to stay focused on what I said. You got to stay focused on what I said. Then the Lord said, then you'll make the decisions you need to make to make your way prosperous and have good success. That's exactly what the Lord said. That's exactly what the Lord said. That's how it works. And if you don't know of a surety, the enemy going to try to come and ah, 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 look at me and try to pull you off to make you miss that blessing. And in some cases, it's a destiny blessing like Ruth and them other women or like Jacob and Esau. Don't you know if Esau had kept his birthright, if Esau had honored God and his father, Isaac, God would refer to himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. That's what Esau gave up. He gave up his place in history. He gave up having the very mouth of God, the very identity of Jehovah God tied into his name. We know Abraham, we know Isaac, and now we know Jacob slash Israel. It was supposed to be Esau, and he gave that away for a bowl of soup. That's right. That's how deep this is. That's how serious it is. So take it seriously. Okay? So write down. Okay. All right. Hold on. For behold, my people, says the Lord, I will give unto you an individual vision. I will give unto you an expansive vision. I will give unto you a detailed vision. And I will show you the great and mighty things that I have in store for you. And I will show you the things that are to come. I want you to be faithful. I want you to stay with me. Stay focused on my word. Stay faithful to that which I say and to that which I show you. And as you walk in faith and obedience, it will come to pass. And everyone will see it. It will be made manifest, says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. That was a live realm of prophetic word that the Holy Ghost breathed into me as I'm talking. You see that? So that's the Lord speaking from heaven through the Holy Ghost who's here with us on earth in us saying what he just said, that he going to give us that clear vision, that expansive vision, that written vision. And we got to write it down and we got to stay with it. And if we stay on Blessing Street and when the blessings truck comes, it's going to come and just drop off all them blessings. Why would you want to miss that? Don't you know I'm going to say this a little bit and I'm going to be through. Don't you know that's why a whole lot of people run around talking about they're trying to find somebody to marry? God said that person in your life years ago, you just missed them. Whole lot of people that are married to the wrong person or by themselves that don't want to be by themselves, that are actually ordained for marriage. You know why? Because you missed them. Not because God didn't send them. You was off doing something you had no business doing or you rejected them. They didn't look like what you thought. It wasn't like what you thought. That's why you by yourself. Not that God didn't send them. So like I said, I don't have time to talk about because that whole thing is deep. People don't realize how deep it is that you can actually miss God and you can miss your blessing. And if you don't stay in faith and if you get over there on Distraction Boulevard, you're going to miss. OK, that's how serious this word is. So take it seriously. All right. Amen and amen. OK, that's it. That's prophetic word for today. If you have any uh, prayer requests, put them on the screen and I'll pray for you. I'm going to pray in tongues now and ask the Holy Ghost if there's anything else that he wants me to release. Okay, didn't get anything. Okay, we're good. All right, amen and amen. So God bless you. Thank you so much for those of you that have uh, uh, watched me live. Thank you for those of you that are watching the replay and those of you that are listening on the podcast because this prophetic word is available on Facebook, uh, Periscope, YouTube, and also there's a podcast uh, on my website. So let me put my website up. ProphetDavidTaylor.org. Okay, now on my Facebook Live page, uh, over in the right-hand corner, there's a sign-up button. Click on that sign up button and get on my mailing list. I send out a weekly newsletter. It comes out on Friday. And on Friday, uh, all the new stuff that I'm dropping, stuff that you might have missed, uh, the prophetic word I did last week, the things that are coming up, 
all the new things I'm releasing are in that newsletter, plus discounts to some stuff. Uh, remember that my prophetic devotional is out. That's why I, divine, I designed my prophetic devotional the way that I did, uh, because it's not just where you can study prophetic scriptures. It's also a journal, okay? So journal style, when God gives you something, you can actually write it down in a book and you can go back later at a later date and see when the Lord's word will come to pass. I'm gonna put that link uh, down there too. Uh, so uh, quarter three is still going on. So it's still time to pick that up. So thank you so much. Now you know that I don't do what I do for money, but if you wanna bless and sow into my ministry, Whenever you sow into the ministry or a man or woman of God, then whatever mantles, anointing, anointings, and grace is on their life and their ministry, you get it in your life. It begins to, to uh, come in your life and manifest as well. So I'm going to put my cash app uh, out there if you'd like to sow, because several people have asked me that. Several people have uh, said that they want to sow into my life. Okay, the prophetic devotional link is there, and um, I'll put my cash app link there too. Okay. So thank you so much for tuning in live. Uh, I can't believe August is almost over. August is winding down, man. Summer's almost gone. G-O-N-E. But going to be some new stuff in the future. We got that word from the Lord today, so I'm excited. So thanks to those of you that have watched me live. I will be here same time next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, uh, next Sunday, August 30th for our next weekly live prophetic word, okay? Amen, amen, God bless, and I will see you then.